Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And to those who are attending their first summer camp session, we're glad to have you with us. At Top Hat, we're always focused on ways to improve the teaching and learning experience for you and your students, whether that's through advanced study tools or promoting peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. Today, Claire Castro from our product marketing team will be giving you the lay of the land on what's new with Top Hat. She'll tackle mobile enhancements and offer a look at the greater interactivity that will help you deliver more personalized, equitable, and engaging learning in your course. Before, before passing it over to Claire, I wanted to highlight the chat function in this webinar. Please use it to share your learnings, experiences, and any resources you found helpful with your fellow educators. And if you have a question, you can use the Q&A feature to raise it to our presenter. We'll get to as many of these as we can. Okay, over to you, Claire. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Jake. Let me just get my slides up here. Okay, wonderful. Hello, campers. Welcome. I am Claire Castro. I am a senior product marketing manager here at Top Hat. I'm joining today from just outside of New York City on beautiful Long Island. I am thrilled to be here at my second Top Hat summer camp. Uh, last year's event was a lot of fun. I learned a lot from our speakers and our faculty panelists, and I'm really excited to be here again uh, to share some of the innovations that we've been working on here at Top Hat. Okay, so let's go ahead. And before I actually dive into what's new, I want to take a moment to talk about what drives us, the why behind what's new. So I'm sure you've seen this before. Uh, if you were in our last session, you saw it there. It may not be the last time you see this at summer camp, uh, but at Top Hat, our aim is to transform student engagement and empower you to deliver personalized, meaningful, and equitable learning in every course. That is what drives us. So when we're thinking about change and innovation, we're constantly evaluating where can we invest resources so that we make the biggest impact on removing obstacles to engagement and to personalize and equitable learning. Um, so today we're going to look at two main pathways that we're taking towards a more personalized and engaging learning experience, um, because we know that that higher education, like the rest of the uh, as the rest of our rapidly evolving world is changing. It's undergoing a, a period of transformation. We just had a session talking about the impact of generative AI on higher education, but that's not the only place we're seeing change. Students have evolving expectations. They are they have higher expectations for the way that they engage with their courses, for how their coursework is going to to prepare them for their careers. Um, we also see them feeling disengaged and disconnected. So in light of this, and in fact, in the fact that, oops, that our, um, sorry, my skies are a little bit jumpy today. Um, in light of this and all the changes that are happening, we know that the process and experience of learning is more important than ever. So there's two ways that we're going to be um, doubling down on making sure that we're improving this process of teaching and learning. So there's two pathways, as I mentioned, that we're taking. One is by providing more study and collaboration tools for students. So we're going to be giving them new ways to connect to their coursework and to each other. The second is by delivering functionality that improves flexibility and efficiency for you, our educators, making it easier for you to implement evidence-based teaching practices and spend your time on activities that drive connection and better outcomes. So some of what I'm going to show you today in our session is available now to all of our users, but I'm also going to give you a peek into a few things that we are experimenting with at the moment. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, we're going to start with new study and collaboration tools. And I'm going to begin with our biggest innovation. Since its inception, Top Hat has been a powerful tool for facilitating interaction during class. But we know that what happens outside of the classroom is just as important. So in the late spring, we began piloting a new feature called Top Hat Threads. It's designed to facilitate interactions outside of class. So Threads brings an element of social and connected learning to courses by giving students the opportunity to ask and respond to questions and exchange ideas in the context of assigned content. So let's, whoops, 
Let's take a look at what this looks like. So imagine you are a student and you're working through material that's been assigned to you outside of class. So like say we're in a page here that's been assigned to us a reading. Um, and we come across something that you don't understand. It could be a definition that is unclear to you, an explanation you don't understand, an example that doesn't make any sense to you. Whatever it is, you're stuck. Um, so you have a couple of options. You could email your professor, you could jump on whatever group chat is available for your uh, for your particular class or, or text a peer if you have information for your peers. Um, you could also take your chance and search the web or maybe you even ask chat GPT. But what if you could actually go ahead and ask your question right here in the context of the page or the slide where you're stuck? where your classmates and professors have an opportunity to see exactly where you need help and offer assistance. That's what Threads lets you do. By creating opportunities for connection and collaboration between students outside of the classroom, Threads is helping to foster a learning community where students are empowered to seek out help when they need it and provide assistance to each other when they're stuck. So anyone in the course can start a thread on any assigned page or slide Instructors can be as involved as they'd like in these discussions, either as an active participant or just an observer. So here's where we are with threads. Uh, we've been piloting this feature across 42 courses with over 900 students. And so far the responses have been positive. Students uh, generally appreciate, obviously, the opportunity to post their questions, but they also really value the opportunity to see what their classmates are asking. When we showed this um, in an early focus group, that was the first thing that a lot of students said. They're like, I would love to, I just want to see what other people are wondering about, not just myself. They also like being able to ask for help where and when they need it. You know, a lot of them have, they're using messaging apps to talk to their classmates, but they like the opportunity that this is right here where they need the help instead of going going someplace else to ask their question. Now, as part of our pilot, we are looking very closely at usage patterns in the courses that we're piloting in. We're collecting feedback from participants to determine the impact of this feature on student learning. We are using this feedback to answer questions like, what kind of reporting would, would, would be helpful to instructors? Uh, what does it look like in a really high engagement in an engagement class? What does usage look like when a lot of students are involved? Um, how can we drive more engagement with threads? And is there functionality that we need to change or add to deliver more value to the people using this feature? So what is next for Threads? We're going to continue with our limited release of the feature in fall 2023. We're going to pilot it with a larger group as we work toward developing it for a broader release. Now, if you are teaching with Top Hat in the fall, and this looks exciting to you, and you want to try it out in your course and provide feedback, we would love to involve you in our pilot. Um, to get involved, you can either reach out to your Top Hat representative or you can sign up at our pilot recruitment page, um, the address for which is up on the screen. We will also drop it in the chat for you as well. Um, you can go there and register your interest. Now, we are learning a lot through our pilots. It has been very interesting um, talking to our piloters and um, getting feedback from our student users as well. Um, and there's a couple of things that we're learning and we are, um, we are, that is going to lead me to our next our next area of innovation that we are exploring here at Top Hat. Okay, and that is AI. So Top Hat is making a significant foray into AI, beginning with the development of an AI-powered assistant that we're experimenting with in Threads. So let me provide some context here. Um, so as we dig into the findings of, of our Threads pilots, one thing that we're observing is that engagement breeds engagement. Perhaps this is not surprising to you as educators, uh, but in the courses where we had really higher than average engagement, where we have about half the students actively contributing to Threads and the majority of the students in the class actively consuming Threads, we found that there, there's been some element of instructor involvement. So in other words, the instructor is actively working to facilitate connection. They're encouraging students to share their questions via threads and where it makes sense to do so, they're actually engaging with threads themselves so that students see their curiosity rewarded and encouraged. 
And when students see engagement with questions and posts in threads, they post more. Um, conversely, we've also seen some courses where usage drops off pretty quickly. A few students will post, and if they don't get a response right away from anyone, the usage dies down, the conversation stops. So this led, led us to wonder, could we use AI to drive interaction with threads so that students can ask questions and get feedback faster? So we've begun experimenting with an integrated AI assistant in threads that would give students the opportunity to get immediate feedback to their comments and questions while they await engagement from their peers. And then they could share that feedback with their classmates for the benefit of their learning community. So let me show you what this looks like. Um, so just as in the previous example, I come, I'm in my course, I'm reading, doing a reading assignment, I have a question, I post it in threads. When I post it, you'll see here, I get a prompt from an AI assistant asking if I would like AI to provide more context. If I say yes, it will go ahead and offer a response to my comment or question. Now, one thing that's important to note here is that it's actually answering this question in the context of the material in the course. So instead of going out to the web um, and looking for an answer there, it's starting here on the page and in the course that I'm in. So the responses are anchored here in my course. This is important. Um, the AI responses are only invisible to me as the original poster of this thread by default. Um, if I if it if the response doesn't really answer my question, I can regenerate the response as well. Or though if it does help me, if I find the response helpful, I can actually use the send button and I can share it with my with my classmates as well for their benefit. So now the AI response becomes visible to my classmates. So I'll let you see here. So I would send it, it would make it visible. So this is very much still in a development phase. It's something that we expect to experiment with in the fall in a very limited number of courses that are involved in our threads pilot. Our hope is for several outcomes. One is that the AI assistant helps students get unstuck faster, that we can scale this very personalized learning experience of getting your specific question answered and getting help where and when you need it. The second thing we're hoping is that it leads students to ask more questions and threads because the visibility into what your peers are asking is part of the value of social and connected learning. It's bringing a human dimension to learning. It's not just me reacting to and processing the content. It's me learning alongside my peers and getting some insight into the way that they are interacting with the content. And I may get a window into a question I may not even have thought to ask. And three, we're hoping that this, in driving this kind of engagement, we're building a sense of community and belonging that is so vital to students' success. So again, it's very early and our initial pilot will be with a very small cohort of courses. But if this is something that you're eager to get involved in when the opportunity arises, I would get involved in our Threads pilot. Um, again, we have um, our recruitment page where you can sign up. Um, which has been shared um, in the chat, and we can share it again uh, later. That is the pool of people that we're going to be going to when we're ready to start experimenting with this in actual courses. All right, so that's a glimpse into where we're going. Um, now I want to shift away from features that are in pilot phase, and I'm going to look at a few other improvements to the student experience that will be available for all users in the fall. Um, and I'm going to take, let's talk about our mobile app. So on its most basic level, um, the Top App mobile app makes it easy for students to participate in class from almost any device. But as, to as Top Hat has evolved, our app has become an even more integral tool for helping students stay connected to their coursework and to stay on track both in and outside of the classroom. So we've been focused on ways to enhance the mobile experience for students. And as a result, over the last six to nine months, we've introduced numerous new features for mobile, starting with the number one most requested student feature, um, and that is push notifications. So now we're actually sending out timely reminders to students uh, when they're using our iOS or Android app, letting them know when they have an upcoming due date for a graded assignment in Top Hat. So um, if they have a test or they have page a page that's assigned as homework, 
uh, when the student hasn't completed it and the due date is three days out, they're going to get a push notification. And the push notification will tell them, hey, your work going, coming up, it's going to give them the assignment name, the course, and the due date. Now we're working on extending personal notifications. Um, we've had a really high opt-in rate um, for students. Uh, they like getting these notifications. So we're looking to extend them to other areas of the course. Um, the next thing we're gonna do with push notifications is actually related to threads. So for those in our pilot, um, students will get notifications when new threads are put uh, are started in content that's assigned to them. And they'll also get notifications when they get a response to one of their threads, which again should help drive some more engagement with threads. Now, another highly requested feature we've added to the mobile app is the ability to view content in dark mode. Um, so students, some students just find this more comfortable. Maybe you do as well um, as you work through um, applications on your mobile device. I can help save battery as well. So now when your phone is in dark mode, Top Hat is in dark mode. We've also added a My Library section to the mobile app. So for those our view who are users of Top Hat interactive textbooks, you may be aware that students have lifetime access to their Top Hat texts when they purchase them, even after the course ends. They have always been able to get to this content through uh, the web application of Top Hat, um, but now that's actually available on mobile as well in a new section called My Library. And finally, we have made some significant improvements to the way questions display on pages in our mobile app. And as part of these experience uh, of these improvements, the Top Hat mobile app actually now supports split screen view for tablets, so iPads and Android tablets. Uh, so this lets you either open a new application alongside a Top Hat page, and it also allows questions from that Top Hat page to open alongside the page, so it's easier to interact with the questions. So those are some changes to our mobile app. I do want to take a moment again to highlight the mobile app as you head into the new term. Do make sure your students are aware of the mobile app. I think sometimes we take it for granted that students are always on their phone and so they know this and they're plugged in and they have the app, but there are some that we come across that are not aware of it. It is available for iOS devices through the Apple App Store and for Android device devices via Google Play. It really helps students get the most out of their Top Hat experience, particularly when you're assigning content or using a Top Hat textbook. So do make sure that your students are aware of the mobile app. Okay, so that's our mobile app. Moving along, I am very happy to report that one of the most requested features from students and professors alike, student content search, is finally here. So student content search is a lot like what it sounds like. Um, it allows students to search for keywords within assigned course content, helping them locate information more efficiently. So users can now enter search terms in a new search field at the top of the content tree. Well, you'll see it up here at the top of the content tree. Um, and then they'll be able to preview the content before they dive into the content item that they want to explore. Our search tool looks for the search text in content titles, in page content, questions in pages, both the titles of those questions and the actual text content of those questions, slide titles, and uploaded files. The only content that's really not searchable at this time is the content in the slides themselves. So search has already been released to all of our summer courses. We expect to begin making it available in fall courses in mid-August with the aim of all students having access to search on the web and mobile by September. So we're very excited that this is um, finally here. Uh, it's definitely been something that folks have been asking for. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to switch gears a little bit. We've spent a fair amount of time talking about features directly related to the student experience. Now, of course, these features should also benefit educators as well by empowering students to self-serve and to work with greater confidence. But we've also made some recent improvements aimed specifically at educators that I would like to highlight today. Um, and the first up is in-app content updates. So for you, those of you who may not be aware, Top Hat has a growing catalog of interactive textbooks and lab manuals that can be adopted and easily personalized to fit your unique course. 
Um, for instructors that use these dynamic textbooks, in-app content updates makes it easier than ever to keep your course material relevant and up-to-date. And that's even if you've customized the content. So what happens is notifications within the course let you know when updates are available to the content that you have adopted for your course. Once you are notified, you have the option to update your course content at your earliest convenience, whether that's now or you want to wait until after the term is over at another time after you've covered the material that's that needs to be updated. Um, users can review updates and they can easily accept or reject them on a page by page basis at the click of a button, which gives you the flexibility to choose exactly what parts of your content you want updated and when. So if this sounds familiar to you, we did do a beta version uh, of this feature that was released last spring. It was for a limited number of titles in the Top Hat catalog. We've made some improvements to the experience based on feedback from users in our beta program. And now in-app content updates is available for all content in the Top Hat catalog. So it's no longer limited to just those few titles um, that we uh, initially rolled this out with last spring. If you did experience the beta version, you'll notice that we've made some improvements to the overall experience. There is now this new content status badge at the top of your content tree here. Um, and this lets you know if the content that is in your course is the latest version, that it matches the version that's in our catalog in terms of like the last time it was updated. So if the dot on the content status badge is green, you're good. You may have the latest version. If it is red, that means that there are updates available. We now also have a remind me later option. So when you click in to see that option that, that updates are available, you can set a specific date that you wanna be reminded via email to go and review the updates in your course. We've also streamlined the experience to highlight the most important update decisions. So especially those that will conflict with any kind of edits that you have made to the course. Um, and then we also added a split screen view, which allows you to look at the new content alongside the existing content and see exactly where changes have been made. So those are in-app content updates. And then another improvement that we've made for instructors is our live gradebook option. So our live gradebook option gives you more flexibility around how you want grades to be released to your students. So instructors can toggle between two grade options in their course settings. We have a default setting, which is the way Top Hat has generally behave, has behaved in the past, which is that grades are released for items when the due date has passed. Um, and now we have a new setting that you can choose to enable if you'd like, where the gradebook displays scores for all items, including those with a future date and those being presented. So this was in beta for a while. Some of you may have had this feature turned on earlier. It is now available in all courses. The default is the way that you're generally used to, um, and you now you have the option to, for, uh, to, to enable the live gradebook. Now, these two features that we just looked at are available now, and you can take advantage of them in your fall class. Now I wanna give you a little peek behind the curtain, um, and I wanna share something we're experimenting with to bring greater ease and efficiency to course creation. So I mentioned earlier that we are experimenting with AI in our threads feature as a way of driving student engagement outside of class. But Threads is not the only area where we're experimenting with AI powered tools. We're excited that AI has this potential to offer greater support for both the creative and administrative uh, aspects of course design and delivery. So for instance, right now, what we're looking at is ways that AI might save instructors time by generating questions um, aligned to their course content along with hints and explanations. Um, to help students get feedback. So again, just as when I talked about the thread assistant taking the content of the course into consideration and generating helpful feedback or helpful responses based on uh, what's in the course, anchoring them right there in your content, this would behave similar to that. It's just one of the experiments that our product and engineering teams are working on right now. Um, we're doing concept testing um, at the moment on this. We know there are many ways that AI can, uh, we could harness AI 
to enhance the potential of instructors and students and to make learning more effective, engaging, and inclusive for all. Through the course of our discovery with this um, and experimentation, we're going to continue to seek feedback from educators, institutions, and learners to make sure that we are meeting their needs. So uh, we've covered a lot today from experiments and pilots into new functionality that's in general release and available for everyone right now. Beyond the new features that are up on the screen that will be active in courses this fall, we're also experimenting with AI to improve the teaching and learning experience. More to come on that. And as higher education continues to change, we'll continue listening to student and educator feedback and looking for ways to innovate so that we can support you in delivering learning experiences that inspire and connect. Now, if you'd like to learn more about any of the features that I talked about today, um, or, or other recent changes and to get the latest on upcoming releases, there are a couple of resources available to you. One is our success center, our support site, success.tophat.com. We have support articles and information there that you and your students can reference at any time. Um, your Top Hat representative is also there to assist you. Um, so let them know how they can help you. We also have a customer newsletter that we send out on a monthly basis. So keep an eye on that. That's generally where we share news about new feature releases, things that have been released and things that are coming soon, as well as share information about events like summer camp. Um, so do make sure that you keep an eye out from for that newsletter if you are in a uh, or if you are using Top Hat. Um, and actually, we'll drop uh, in the chat the link to subscribe to the customer newsletter if you are not receiving it already. All right. Well, thank you for um, for your time today. Um, and I'm going to pause here for some q and A. I've seen in the uh, corner of my eye here that there have been some questions coming into the chat. So I'm going to take a look at what we have here. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so somebody had asked, uh, will Top Hat be integrating generative AI into the platform like Khan Academy has with personalized tutoring, tutoring using chat GPT? Yes, I think you probably asked that toward, this, toward the front of the, the, the beginning of the session. We are, we're, we know that AI is, is everything is changing, things are rap changing rapidly. So we are actively looking at ways that we can integrate it, um, starting with the Threads Assistant, but also looking at the instructor experience as well. Um, so our Threads archived so profs can see later for feedback. That's a great question. So Threads would be, um, I believe Threads are available, will stay active in the course. I'll have to report back to our product team about any, any kind of, um, archiving beyond that, but you certainly can go back to your course at any given time and see um, what kind of um, what kind of answers or questions come in through threads. We're also working on for threads um, an instructor uh, email digest so that they can get on a regular basis some information about what questions like where activity in threads, who's posting, what's being posted. Um, so that would help with that as well. All right, let's see what other questions. So let's see. Um, can faculty get a content search too? That's a great question. Yeah, we've definitely heard that before. Um, it is right now we are focused on the student content search um, and making sure that we are monitoring usage, make sure that students have an optimal experience. So that is what we prioritize. Um, we do know that there are, that there have, we have gotten requests for um, faculty um, search as well. And it's something that is on the, um, on the radar of our product team. I don't expect it to be anything that comes in the next year or so, but we will definitely be um, investigating that. It's not quite as simple as turning the, cert, the student feature on for, um, for instructors because there's different use cases and different parameters for those searches, but it's certainly something that we are looking at. All right, let's see. Let's see. 
Any ideas for using threads comments for a grade? That is a great question. So that's another question that came in. Um, this is something that we've been looking at in our pilot. Um, there have sort of been mis mixed responses. Um, so it seems like our very successful piloters where we have a lot of interaction in the in their courses, they are incentivizing their students and using it as sort of an overall course participation grade, but they're not necessarily assigning, like having them be auto graded or something like that. Um, we asked students about their motivation for posting threads, would they participate in it? And they were kind of mixed as well. Some said they would participate if there was a grade associated with it. Others said they wouldn't really want points to be associated with it because they wanted they they didn't want people posting in threads just to post in threads and get a grade. So um, right now there's not like a grading functionality built into into threads, and that's something we're going to continue to investigate. Um, but I think where we're seeing the most success is where where it's instructors are actively engaging with their students in threads, encouraging them to interact with each other on threads, and also, you know, taking into account the students involvement in threads as part of their overall course participation grade. Great question. Let's see. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. We answered that one. All right. Um, another question that came in with regard to threads is can students post anonymously in threads? Um, so that is not available just yet, but we are actively working toward adding an anonymous feature to threads that would allow students to actually post anonymously in threads because some of them do, you know, they may be a little bit um, nervous to post their questions or they don't want to appear foolish. They can enable the anonymous feature, um, but threads will not be anonymous to the instructor. So while the question may be anonymous to other students, we're allowing instructors to have that visibility as well. Okay, lots of questions about threads. Let's see, can AI assistants provide wrong answers to students? Yeah, great, great question. So we know that AI has limitations for sure. Um, actually, students are seem to be very well aware of this as well. Um, when we did some focus groups, that was one thing when we talked about AI. They, they said, well, what if it gives me the wrong answer? Um, that is, you know, that is possible. And that's part of, you know, I think why we're doing so much experimentation and concept testing. Um, the, the AI has limitations, but it's going to look at the course and it's going to provide the best answer possible. That also is why also we allow additional posting to happen in those threads. So AI can answer the students shares that answer. Someone can jump in if they're, if they see the need for clarification. Okay, let's see what else here. Um, can instructors moderate threads? What kinds of controls do they have um, if students post things that are inappropriate? Um, okay, so that is something that we're working toward as well. Um, so we're going to add the ability for instructors to delete any message, messages in threads at their discretion. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, when we add the and the anonymous posting option, it will allow students to um, be anonymous to their peers, but not to their instructor. So the instructor will always know who's posting in threads. Let's see what else came up. Okay. Um, when threads is released fully, will it be an optional feature that can be turned off? Right now, we're not looking, we're, we're thinking it would be something that would be available to everyone um, pending the results of our pilots and experimentation. Um, it really is meant, envisioned to be more of a student-driven feature where students are helping students um, and interacting, um, hence the thought that it would be something that would be available to all users rather than something that the instructor um, would opt into. Um, but we are looking, you know, we're, we're open to other uh, methods as well and, um, and, and 
as we collect feedback from our piloters. Let's see. All right. If you're brand new to Top Hat, where is the best place to start and find resources? So I mentioned earlier, our support site is wonderful. Um, but when you're new to Top Hat, um, if you're brand new, you should talk out, reach to your, out to your Top Hat representative. Uh, we do do onboarding with our new um, users, um, and we can make sure that you get support from um, from the top hatters to make sure that you are implementing the uh, platform successfully in your class. Okay, great questions. We got lots lots in here. Let me just take a look. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Okay. Well, thread works. Threads work on mobile. Yes, it does work on mobile. It currently works on mobile. So our pilots, students can access, start, read, interact with threads on mobile. We are also adding mobile notifications as well. Let's see. Um, can students opt out of mobile push notifications? Uh, yes. Yeah, so students can opt in, they'll be prompted to opt into mobile notifications when they access our app. We actually have a very high opt in rate um, and students can always turn off the notifications in the app settings on their phone. Uh, we do have plans down the road to build out the feature more to add a, more of a notification center and more options around notifications where you what you can define what you want to be notified about and when. Uh, we're not there yet, but that is sort of our vision for down the road with mobile push notifications. Let's see, what else do we have here? I think we have a few moments for um, for additional questions. Uh, tell us a bit about more about the Threads pilot. What's involved? How can we sign up? Okay, so we do have the sign up um, site. Um, which will drop into the chat and we'll share out after. Um, you can register there. Once you register, you'll get additional information about the pilot. But basically what we'll do is um, enable the, the feature in your course. Um, you would make sure that you introduce it to your students and set some expectations that they should be using it in the class um, when they have questions and they're reading or if there's another way you'd like to, them to use it, um, feel free. Uh, but make sure your students are aware of it. We'll ask you as the instructor using it um, to sit down with us for one to two interviews because um, we want to hear all about how you're using it, what your experience has been, what are things that would make it smoother for you. Um, and then we'll also ask you to collect feedback from your students. We have a very brief survey. Um, it takes less than 10 minutes to complete um, that we would give you a link to to share with your students to collect their feedback. Um, and for students, all we ask them to do is collect is is fill out the the survey. Um, we have a drawing for students when they complete the survey um, to give them some incentive. And we can also provide you while the while we don't provide you, we keep the the feedback from the students anonymous uh, to use the instructor. We can provide you with a list of the students who participated so that if you want to incentivize them um, with extra credit for providing top hat with feedback. We can absolutely provide you with a list of names. Um, so I hope one of my colleagues can drop the um, drop the link in the chat um, if it's not there already. And let's see. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just catching up here. Let me see the chat. Okay, great. Yeah, I see. I see we have the the recruit the the top hat uh, threads recruitment page uh, in the chat. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you all for your participation today. Um, if you did get a if you did ask a question that I missed or that I didn't get to, um, we'll make sure that we follow up um, afterwards. Uh, but thank you for your participation today. Um, I am going to, uh, to whoops, here we go. Um, you're going to see a poll question pop up on your screen in just a moment. 
Let us know how you enjoyed this session. We would love to hear from you. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Top Hat and how it can help you um, enable high impact collaborative learning in your course, please let us know. A Top Hat team member will be happy to help you out. And then before we close, I want to highlight what's next for summer camp. So you are definitely going to want to stick around. You don't want to miss our next session. Coming up, we have acclaimed educator and bestselling author Jose Antonio Bowen, who will be sharing strategies to create a more welcoming start to the new semester, along with some great ideas for how you can make your assessments more engaging and motivating for students. Then to wrap up the day, we're going to walk you through how to create an interactive syllabus using Top Hat. It's a session that we've run in the past. It's always been an audience favor favorite. Um, so with that, thank you again for choosing your, to spend your time with us. All the best and have a great rest of your day. Take care.